morning to you all. Welcome to our last Sunday morning service in this year. It's very good to welcome you here, but we have some folks here who are unwell. People we need to pray for today. Uh, Mike Wilde is not very well uh, this week. Uh, Marion has been poorly and still is, so we obviously think of them as they can't join us this morning. What we're going to do this morning is to look a little bit, well I, I've called the message this morning, um, Remembering and Forgetting. We're going to begin with a, a hymn that reminds us of the great faithfulness and goodness of God. If you're using the, a hymn book, it's number 106, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. And I'm sure we can, many of us can testify how good God has been to us <coughs> through this year. As we end this year, 
we will continue to praise and worship. Lord, we are sinful creatures, yet we can know the joy of sin forgiven and come today to thank and worship. May we never forget the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross to make it possible for us to come into your holy presence, not in any goodness of our own, but covered in the righteousness of Christ. Help us to continue to live for you in this coming year. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Not too many notices this week. We will have, however, a Bible, not a Bible study, but a prayer meeting on Wednesday. And if it's possible, you could join us in the church. It's much easier than trying to have a prayer meeting with some people far away and some here. But what I would like, if at all possible, if you're coming to that prayer meeting, that you would be willing to have previously, before you come, have found a scripture that you thought has been important to you, and that you would be willing to read out to us, and we will pray for God to be with us in this coming year, and help us and guide us. That's going to be a Wednesday at 7.30. There's no coffee morning this week. That starts next week. The same with toddler group. No toddler group this Wednesday. That starts when the children go back, which is next week. We're going now to read the scripture, the first scripture that we're going to look at tonight, which is from Psalm 90. If you know this psalm, you probably won't be surprised at uh, this being a passage today. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning, Though in the morning it springs up to you, by evening it's dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. For you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due to you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O oh Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for us as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favour of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Psalm 90. We're going to sing a hymn now based 
on the words of that psalm. It's 115 in your books if you're using one. Our God, our help, in ages past, our hope for years to come. <laughs> to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Let's come now again before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we live in a troubled and sinful world. Daily, we hear of lives lost due to terrorism or war. And this day, at the end of the year, we pray for the people of Ukraine and your church there. We particularly pray for the people of Kharkiv, where friends of ours <coughs> worked and lived. We pray for the church there, for your people there, and we pray that you will bring peace. We also would pray, Lord, for the people of Israel, for the hostages that are still being held, 
We pray for the folks in Gaza suffering because of acts of terrorism and now living in tents and relying so much on aid. We do pray for those seeking to reach a ceasefire and an end to this war. We pray that you will keep us faithful in this new year and seek to know you better and love you more. We pray for those who mourn, for those who are ill. Particularly we pray for Marion and for Mike. We also pray, Lord, for those who are lonely and troubled. We pray for the success in this coming year of the Gospel, wherever it is preached, and keep us, Lord, faithful in prayer. We ask these things, giving thanks to you for your great goodness to us, in Jesus' name. short hymn now, again a hymn of thanks. The first three hymns this morning are all about thanking God for his goodness, his faithfulness. And this one, 51, now thank we all our God is another. Our final two songs will be concerning the hope for the future. <laughs> to remind you that this is the last day of 2023. And what people may, in some cases, and certainly some of the television programs, look back on the year soon to be past and gone. But as Christians, we have so much to thank God for all his faithfulness and his mercies towards us. That's why I actually read the psalm, Psalm 90. Reminds us 
a number of things about God and about ourselves. In verse 1, we were told that the mountains and the creation that God made reminds us that God was from everlasting to everlasting. God never had a beginning and he'll never have an end. We cannot understand that really because we have beginnings and we have ends. He reminds us in that psalm that he is God. God is eternal. No beginning, no end. Unlike us humans, we're told that we are dust and will return to dust. We were reminded in that Psalm 2 that we need to remember that a thousand years in the sight of God is like a day or a watch in the night. Sounds an awful long time for us, a thousand years, a whole millennium, doesn't it? But not in God's sight. We reminded, and we would know this, I'm sure, that we humans are rather like grass, which springs up in the morning and by evening it's dry and withers. For the psalm tells us that we finish our days with a moan, whether it's 70 years, 80 years, it quickly passes. It seems to me that Frequently, as you turn on the television, they're telling us about the people that have passed away in this year. A number of famous people, and a lot more that weren't famous, passed into eternity. Just write, wrote down a few that were on one particular program. Michael Parkinson, some of you will have heard about him. Many of you will have heard of Bobby Charlton. A footballer who actually played in the cup winning World Cup in 1966. Matthew Perry, Paula Grady, Tina Turner, we could go on. Said scarcely a day will go by when some important, first of all, if someone who was important, or had made something himself or herself, <coughs> had gone. I don't know whether you're a statistician big person who likes statistics. But we're told that in 2023, by the end of this day, almost 61 million people will have died in this year. 33 million will be male, 28 female. I can't explain why that's the difference. Um, but that's what the statistics tell us. But one thing is certain, isn't it, that we are now all one year older than we were on the last Sunday in 2022. <coughs> a child who was last year, on this Sunday, 12 years old, is now a teenager. The hymn we sang today says these words, Time, like an ever-rolling stream, bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. We were walking <coughs> in a churchyard in Bamborough the other day uh, and I was looking at some of the gravestones, the ones that you could still read. Um, we went actually to look at the um, tomb of Grace Darling. But every time you go into a graveyard, you will obviously see many of the stones are now almost illegible. People have lived, gone, their relations have gone, and nobody perhaps remembers them at all. But there's a problem, isn't there? Our lives are short. We face an eternity, either with God in heaven, or with Satan and his minions in hell. That's pretty blunt, isn't it, it's true. We, that's most of us, I think, 
spend our days working, planning, dreaming for the future, which we may not have any time to enjoy when we reach towards the end of our lives. There was a time when I thought that my father was a very old man. He had his 60th birthday. I thought, wow, he's old. He died at the age of 65. I have to remind myself now that I am over 80. And I still always don't always think of myself as an old man. I still think of the future. But how much more of a future would I have? How we all, and especially myself, we need to learn and pray the words of the psalm that we read. It's a wonderful verse as we go into a new year. Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Every day we have, it's a precious day, and we will never ever have it again. Have you ever thought about that? When this day ends, we're never going to have that day again, and whatever we do today, we can't change. I calculated that I've lived about 30,000 days already on this earth. But the one thing I'm pretty certain of, I will not have another 30,000 days on this earth. I'd break all records if I did. As we look back at this year, almost gone, what do we do? What do you think? I think we all should give thanks to God for his goodness to us. Why? Well, first of all, he has provided for all our needs. We have food to eat. And in the last few days, probably more than we should have had to eat. We've been kept from danger. We've had our needs met. We've got homes to live in. Clothes to wear, warmth, comfort, we friends and family. We have an extended family among other Christian believers. We have schools that our children can go to. Sometimes they're not so keen to go, but we have schools for children and grandchildren to attend. We have doctors and hospitals. We tend, of course, to take all these gifts for granted. But you know, they all come from a loving, caring God. The God who we worship, and above all many of us, all of us here, have been born again as children of God. <coughs> what a privilege that is. We are called children of God if we have put our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we move into this last Sunday, try to think, where will you be when the last Sunday of 2024 comes? Hmm. Some of us may be here, God willing, and giving thanks again. And we should thank God for his goodness to us and for his church here. Some of us might be ill or infirm. Some of us may have passed into eternity. Would that be heaven for you? Are you sure? If not, should you make sure that you can pass into heaven? Will I, will you, be trusting in God at the end of next year? For there's one thing certain. Only God knows how many days we have left. There's another issue, isn't there? 2024, will it be the year in which Jesus returns to call his people home? We should always be ready for that event. We never know 
what's going to happen from one day to the next. That our extended family Kath's nephew is married to a girl called Vicky. They've just had a little baby. That baby's still quite small. Wonderful. But that little baby was, has been looked after quite a lot in the last few months by the grandmother. Suddenly she was taken into hospital just over Christmas and died in a couple of days. Nobody would have thought that could possibly have happened. She looked after this little baby two days every week. And yet, her time had come. We never know, do we, how long we have. It's important that we realise that we're not going to live ever. And have we made any plans for when we've called to end our lives and God ends up our time here on earth and we no longer breathe or are with others here. That may sound a little bit sad, but we need to be aware that we are not immortal. There will come a time when God closes in a sense the book on us. That will be the end of our lives. But we've been thinking, of course, remembering, remembering God's goodness. I'd like you to think today, particularly as you go through the day, of all God has done for you. What blessings you have. I feel wonderfully blessed a lovely wife, what for 55 years now. Uh, I have four children, eight grandchildren. What a blessing these things are. Do we always appreciate them? I don't know. But of course, as we look forward, do we have a hope for the future? Do we have hope for 2024? That's why I read that passage from the Apostle Paul. But before we look at that, we're going to have a, a song which again reminds us that we can have a certainty and a hope in the future. It's the song, Yet Not I, but Christ in me. <coughs> Yeah. 
in his work for the Lord but he said towards the end of his life not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me brothers and sisters I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it he had not obtained yet all he would want to do for Christ. Nor, he said, had he already been made perfect. Well, I don't know about you. I know I'm not perfect. And I don't believe, in fact, that we will ever become perfect until we are in heaven. But we have a plan to become more and more like Jesus. We're in good company when the Apostle says, I know I am not perfect. He said he'd press on to know more of Christ and his love, forgetting what was behind and straining for what was ahead. Sometimes I think we need to forget our forgiven failures, weaknesses and sins. It's very easy to have guilt and think back to things we've done that we shouldn't have done or things that we've said that we shouldn't have said. But there's a, a scripture in 1 John 1, verse 9, which says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> While well, the fact the Lord has told us he's forgotten our sins and cast them into sea, Psalm 103, 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Please, please, remember those words. God has removed them. He sold them into the depths of the sea. Don't enter another year looking back on your failures and feeling depressed. What did Paul say? But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. We can forget those failures, those sins. If we've confessed them, God has forgiven them. One thing I do, forgetting what's behind, straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. You know, it's not God who keeps reminding you of your failures and your sins and your weaknesses. It's Satan trying to rob you of the joy and peace that God has promised to give you. So when the tempter comes to you and tells you what an awful person you are, how sinful you are, simply say, those sins have been forgiven and God has accepted me. Trying to rob you of the joy and peace that God has promised. I press on, Paul said, to the goal, to win the prize for which God called me heavenward once in Christ Jesus. This was a result. His. I will continue, he basically had to serve God, following him day by day. Well, this is the time of the year, isn't it, that people start to make resolutions. I wonder if you've done it in the past. If you have, you'll probably remember that it didn't perhaps last as long as you'd hoped. They tend to be an attempt to improve our bodies, our health, but mostly they last just a few days. My resolutions, I'm going to lose more weight. I'm going to have more exercise. I'm going to be kinder in 2024. I'm going to be more generous. I'm going to stop smoking or white vaping. I'm going to stop swearing. These are the things that people around us will think can I suggest to you that as good as these notions may be, we can rarely keep them up for long. I was reminded very carefully this morning as we sat and read the scriptures of a resolution that Kath and I made at the end of last year. We decided that we would use a Bible plan which ensured that in one year we would have read the whole Bible and listened to explanations of many of its passages. It's taken us about 20 to 25 minutes every day. And this was the last day today. We read Revelation 22. We read Psalm 150 this morning. And the end of Nehemiah as well. We've finished that. What a blessing that has been. That was one of the resolutions that I perhaps was a little bit persuaded by my wife to do this, but I found it such a blessing that we've been able to do that and kept on with it, in spite of sometimes it was quite difficult to fit it in. However, reading God's Word daily, praying, Fellowshipping with people in the church are ways that can help us grow more like Jesus. Perhaps that should be the main resolution or prayer for all of us next year. Lord, make me more like Jesus. And perhaps with all our events in life, we may, the things that happen in our lives, we perhaps ought to say, 
what would Jesus do if he was in my shoes? Above all, it's important to put God first in your life. There is nothing that you can face in 2024 that he can't handle and help you with. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What a wonderful verse to take into a new year. All your worries, all your anxieties, and we all have them. Cast your anxiety on him. He cares for you. No matter what comes your way, bring it to him. He really cares about every one of us. Every detail of our lives. That's very difficult for us to come. All the people around, all the Christians around the world, he seems to, he knows all their problems, all their difficulties. Because he's God. I've lived a long time, but I haven't, I wasn't alive in 1939. But the Christmas message in 1939 was done by King George VI. It was his Christmas message at the beginning of the war, the Second World War. He quoted some words from a poem by a lady called Minnie Louise Haskins, which his daughter, who was Princess Elizabeth, later became our queen for 70 years, handed to him. It was called, this little poem, The Gate of the Year, God Knows. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light, safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God trod gladly into the night. And he led me toward the hills and the breaking of day in the lonely east. That poem was not just quoted in 1939. Queen Elizabeth II also read it later in one of her Christmas broadcasts. What could be better than to give our lives into the hands of God for next year? Let him lead us. There was a verse on our calendar today, which was from Jeremiah 6.16. Let me just read it to you. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. As we stand at the crossroads of a new year, may we follow the path that leads to God. May all of us put our trust fully in God for this year, no matter what happens. We shall be in that new year in a few hours. May it be a year in which we give ourselves wholeheartedly to Christ and together here as a fellowship seek for his glory. May God bless us all. We're going to have the song, There is a Hope. There is. We are the most privileged people of all. We have a hope that's sure and steadfast. Sing this and then there's one other thing to do. June first.
gives me strength for every passing day. A glimpse of glory now revealed in me, but yet drives all doubt away. <coughs> I stood in Christ's blessings for him, and Christ in me. transformed, be still, be a witness, be peaceful, be an encourager, be free, be light, be peaceful, be strong, be can't read that one. Connected. connected, be comforted, trustworthy. and be trustworthy. Lots of bees you can take into the new year. So when you're looking at your bees, thinking about bees, think of the things that we can be in this year. God calls us to be his servants and live for him. Let's close with the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship 
of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now throughout 2024 and for all time until we meet in heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.